Hi, welcome back. In the previous sections, we discussed that how for optimal use of resources, we should be using ephemeral clusters. We discussed how we can create the clusters on demand and submit our jobs on them and delete them when our jobs are finished. However, what we did not discuss is how such workflows can be implemented. Dataproc provides built-in workflow capabilities, but they are just limited to Dataproc. However, in an organization, Dataproc or more generally data pipelines forms a small part of a bigger workflow. So we need something that caters to the workflow needs of an entire organization. That's when Apache Airflow comes into the picture. Airflow was developed at Airbnb and it's a platform to programmatically create, schedule and monitor the workflows. You can write Airflow DAGs or directed acyclic graphs in Python and can schedule them to run at specific time. Apache Airflow integrates with a lot of other tools such as Apache Pig, Apache Hive, Apache Pnot, Google Kubernetes Engine, Google Dataproc, to name a few. Installing Airflow is out of the scope of this course, but we will see Dataproc integration with Airflow in this video. As a side note, GCP provides a managed Airflow service called Composer, which runs a highly scalable and available Apache Airflow on Google Kubernetes Engine. For this video, though, I have set up an Airflow instance on Compute Engine VM using Docker. So let's see how we can write an Apache Airflow DAG in Python to create a cluster, submit a PySpark job, and then delete the cluster. Let's get started. So right now I am in the Airflow web UI and this is how it looks like. It might look different for you if you are using an older version. I am using 2.1.0. Uh, if you're using older versions, things like 1.8, 1.10, uh, your UI might look different because the UI was radically overhauled in version 2.0. So here is my sample DAG, which uh, we just discussed, uh, you know, creating the cluster, running the job and deleting the cluster. So I'll come to the graph view. And here you can see the three tasks or the three boxes right now. We don't know about tasks yet. So three boxes, uh, the create cluster, the first box is create cluster. The second one is PySpark task. The third one is delete cluster. So each of this box represents a task within the Airflow ecosystem, right? And these small arrows denote the flow of this workflow. So first task is the create cluster. Once that gets completed, the PySpark task will get executed. And once PySpark task gets complete, the delete cluster task will run. The way Airflow works is that Airflow has a concept of operators where each operator is a Python class and each task in a DAG is an instance of that class and it performs, you know, certain operations. So each of this little block here is an operator. As you can see, uh, the data proc create cluster operator, data proc delete cluster operator, data proc submit job operator, right? So these three operators are getting used in this workflow. And the way these operators work is that they are predefined. You configure them uh, by passing in certain arguments and chain them together in form of a DAG, which is directed acyclic graph. And then when you trigger it, it executes in the way you have defined it to. So here we have defined uh, it to execute sequentially. You can create branching uh, as well. You can have conditional as well, but that is beyond the scope of this lecture. So if you guys want to see an Airflow basics video, do let me know in the comment section below and I will try to create a, a video on Airflow basics. Now let us switch to the code, All right? So this is the DAG, what we saw on the UI, this code, this Python file is driving that UI or is driving that DAG. Uh, here you can see as discussed, we are importing the operators. So we are, op uh, imp so we are importing three operators, which is create cluster, submit job and delete cluster. One thing to note, however, is that if you're using an older version or older build of Airflow, these operators will be present in the Airflow dot contrib, not in the top level providers, Airflow dot providers, the Google cloud 
provider was moved to the top level providers with version 2.0. So that's a thing to note. These are some of the configuration and we will come to them in a later part. Let's first come down and understand how this DAG is getting built. So this is how we define the DAG. This is the DAG name, which you see on the UI, uh, the data proc demo and a simple description and schedule interval and start day. So schedule interval is none as of now, which means this DAG is not scheduled and can only be triggered externally. Schedule interval takes in a cron expression and Airflow will schedule your job at a particular time uh, based on that cron expression. The next argument is start date. Using this, you can tell Airflow when this DAG will become operative or when this DAG execution should start. So right now I have set it to two days ago, which essentially is telling Airflow that it is ready to be executed. And if you want to start a DAG three days in the future, you can do that as well. <clears throat> Next here, you see the three tasks, which we see in the UI. We will discuss what these tasks are. Each task is one step in the DAG. So first one is create cluster. The second one is submit job. The third one is the delete cluster. And each of this task is uh, an instance of individual operators. So create cluster is instance of create cluster operator. Submit job is the instance of submit job operator and delete cluster is instance of delete cluster operator. And all of these tasks are chained together to run one after the other. So that's how you tell that how these tasks are chained. Now coming to the individual tasks, uh, you will see that there are certain common parameters, which is task ID and project ID. And then there are few parameters which are unique to that task. So when you are creating a cluster, you are passing in a cluster config. When you are submitting a job, you are passing a job config. And when you are deleting the cluster, you are passing in the cluster name, the region and the project ID. Now, let us move to the individual configs. So when we talk about cluster config, the usual suspects, the master node config and the worker node config. As you can see, we are using one master node and two worker nodes of N1 standard two type uh, with a boot disk of size 512 gigs. Similarly, for the PySpark job, we are giving in the references which project ID does this job belongs to, the placement on which cluster to place this job and the PySpark job properties, which as of now is just the single driver file, which is configured here on the top. This is my project ID. This is the region. This is the cluster name you should use your own project ID and your own bucket. Do not try to copy this one because it won't work. This name is already taken. So this is how this Python file is driving the DAG, which we saw in the UI. So now let's jump back to the Airflow UI and trigger this DAG and see how it all works together. So now we are in the Airflow. UI and I'll go to the DAG and here I will click on the trigger button. Now it is asking me to choose the type of trigger, which is trigger DAG, which will trigger the DAG immediately. And the one is trigger DAG with config. If I want to pass in certain config, which I do not want to pass in that in this case. So what I will do is that I will click on trigger DAG. So here you can see it is in the light green, which is the running state. I will open up the UI to see what is happening. So here in the graph view, you can see that the create cluster task is in the running state. It is in light green color. If you go to the data proc console, you will see that our cluster demo airflow cluster is in the provisioning state. It has two workers. And if you open up the configuration as well, you will find that uh, our configurations have been up indeed applied. So now I'll, I will fast forward this demo from now onwards. Uh, to show you that how Airflow progresses the execution of this workflow. So once the cluster creation is complete, it will automatically move to the PySpark task. And as soon as that job completes, it will delete the cluster. And if there is some error in between, which I hope is not the case, at least for this demo's purpose, but 
if there is an error in between uh you can configure to move on continue on failure or you can uh choose to halt the execution of the entire workflow that again depends on how you configure your dags but this with this dag uh by default if certain task fails uh what will happen is that airflow will stop the execution then and there so i'll refresh this again it is on auto refresh definitely so it will keep on refreshing itself after a few seconds uh and let us wait for this dag to progress and we will see that you know how uh and we will see how this dag execution is progressing and meanwhile i'll go back the demo air flow cluster is up and running if you refresh it you will see yes that the airflow has progressed to the next task which is running the job so we will see whether or not airflow is actually submitting the job so we'll open the jobs page and we will see that it has indeed triggered a pyspark job which will So let that page yep so here you can see it is in the running state one thing to note however is that we did not mention any job name so that's why it is uh it is triggering the job with a random name in there random uuid uh, but that can also be configured in the dag itself and now when this progresses to the last step it should progress in couple of minutes we will see that the cluster deletion will start All right so the pyspark task is also complete successfully and you will see that this dag is in the deletion phase indeed so airflow has started deleting the dag so what we covered in this video is that how to create the workflow that we have been discussing so far in this course so far in this course we have discussed that we should use ephemeral clusters we should submit jobs on them and when we are, and when they and when the clusters are not in use we should delete those cluster but so far we were doing it manually we were creating the cluster either via g cloud or we were creating the cluster via the google cloud console this is the first time we saw how this all can be automated and how this how airflow can help you do that so i hope you liked this video if you did please make sure to hit thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye